of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Why don't you lift your hands and just call on that name that's above every other name. Jesus, we love you. Oh, Jesus, we magnify you and honor you and adore you. Jesus, your name is to be exalted. Oh, Jesus, all power in heaven and in earth belongs to your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to the name of Jesus. Bless your holy name, bless your holy name. Bless your holy name. Do you feel the special presence of the Lord in this place today? There is such a unique presence of the Lord in this house. If you have a piece of paper and a pencil or pen, or if you have your iPhone or iPad handy, grab it. I want you to write down the names of the Grossel family so that throughout this day you can specifically call their names in prayer. First of all is Mary Grossel. That's the mother. The oldest son is Mark. The middle child is Michael. The youngest little girl, her name is Julia. So if you'd write those four names down so that when you pray, you're praying specifically for them, if you would, please. Everybody said amen. Amen. Could we stand together, all of us, and honor the word of the Lord? I'm going to preach to you today the first of four messages to usher us into the new year. I want you to know it's going to be a year that will be filled with the supernatural works of God. I've been saying a lot about challenge, and that is because we're living in the most challenged day in the history of our world. We're seeing challenges that come from government, challenges that come from the courts, challenges in the school system, challenges in the financial world, challenges in everyday living, things like inflation and job situations. There are a lot of challenges. But let me say to you clearly, unequivocally, that 2023 is going to be the year that you're going to see more the supernatural hand of God than you've ever seen it in your lifetime. Take that to the bank. I'm preaching this morning from the subject, Cut Yourself Loose. I want to talk about the things that need to be left in 2022, things that do not need to be a part of your 2023. I'm going to talk to you today. I probably won't preach as hard as I normally do, but I want to get a very important message across. I'm going to close the message today with communion. You see the communion set up all around this building, and we'll be directing you out to receive communion, and I want to encourage all of you to take communion today. There is a teaching going around that is not scriptural, and that is that you have to be perfect to take communion. If you had to be perfect to take communion, nobody in the building could take it, and the people that are handing it out couldn't give it. Hello? That is not a scriptural teaching. The Bible says that there's sickness and death among you for not rightly discerning the body of Christ. It doesn't say nothing about discerning you. It doesn't say any part of that is based on what you're doing. It's based on you not having the right understanding of what was done for you by Jesus Christ when he gave his body to be broken and his blood to be shed. Honey, it's because of that broken body and blood that we can all stand here, that we can all feel his presence, that we can all have our sins forgiven and remitted, and that we can all take communion today. So when I call for communion, I'm asking everybody to come. Any of you that are so pharisaical that you're going to look down your nose at somebody taking it that you think don't deserve it, you stay in your seat. Whew. 
See, I just got done saying I'm going to be sweet and nice and calm today. But I'm preaching this morning on cut yourself loose. Tonight, please be back with us. I'm preaching tonight a very, very important message entitled, This is How We Overcome. This is how we overcome. Next Sunday morning, I'm going to bring to you the vision that God gave me. Several parts to that. You want to be here to hear that and be a part of it. I promise you it is from the Lord. I've stood before you. I have notes. I went through all my notes yesterday from 2004 all the way to right now of what I've brought to you every single new year. And I'm not saying this for my glory. I'm saying it for the glory of God. I'm nothing. I'm no different than you are. I'm just a human like all of you are. But to the glory of God, God has never said anything to us in January that didn't come to pass. Amen. And it's going to come to pass this time too. So next Sunday morning, I'll be preaching the vision. And then next Sunday night, my closing message of the four messages is entitled, Ready, Set, Go. Ready, set, go. You don't want to miss one of these four messages. Be here with us Sunday morning and Sunday night for the next two weeks. Thank you for being here today. Matthew chapter 18, verses 8 and 9. Matthew chapter 18, verses 8 and 9. Jesus said, everybody say Jesus said. Jesus said, said, if your hand or your foot causes you to stumble and sin, cut it off. And throw it away from you. That is, remove yourself from the source of temptation. It is better for you to enter life crippled or lame than to have two hands or two feet and be thrown into everlasting fire. Verse number 9. If your eye causes you to stumble in sin, pluck it out and throw it away from you. That is, remove yourself from the source of temptation. It is better for you to enter life with only one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into the fiery hell. Let me maybe help you understand a little bit. I I understand these are drastic verses. Maybe, Maybe some of the hardest to understand in your Bible. But Jesus was making a point. If there's anything in your life that causes you or is causing you to lose out with God, even if it would be something like your hand or your foot or your eye, I think he went right for the hardest thing he could think of. Cut off your own hand, cut off your own foot, cut out your own eye. I think he did that to let us know that anything, or anybody that keeps you from being what God designed you to be, cut it off. Cut it off. My subject today is cut yourself loose. You may be seated. In the King James Version and other versions, verse 8 says, If your hand or foot offend thee. In other Versions, verse 8 says, If your hand or foot causes you to stumble. And another version says, If your hand or foot causes you to sin. These are serious verses. These are verses not to be taken lightly. These are definitely in the hard to understand category of things that Jesus said. It's not to be taken lightly that these words were not written by one of his followers, were not written by even a prophet or an apostle, but that these are the words of Jesus. It's important to understand that in his thinking, and I think his thinking is far above my thinking, but in his thinking, there is nothing worth going to hell over 
Hello? I literally was looking at something on Amazon yesterday that was for sale. And it's very, very hard to find. And there's a place there where people comment. And I noticed that somebody who maybe their elevator didn't go all the way up wrote in the comment section, I'd go to hell to get one of these. Yesterday. I want to tell you something. There is nothing in this world worth going to hell over. There is no body on this earth worth going to hell over. There is no philosophy on this earth worth going to hell over. There's no group you can belong to on this earth worth going to hell over. There is no possession you can acquire that's worth going to hell over. I just want to establish that up front. According to Matthew Henry's commentary, it says of Matthew 18, 8 and 9, the verses I read to you, it says this, Surely it is beyond compare better to undergo all possible pain, hardship, and self-denial here and to be happy forever hereafter than to enjoy all kinds of worldly pleasure for a season and to be miserable forever. It's not a good trade, folks. In the NIV study Bible, it addresses that phrase, cut them off, talking about your hand or your foot or plucking out your eye. And NIV study Bible said that this phrase emphasizes the need for drastic action, end quote. The need for drastic action. Can I say to you on this beautiful Sunday morning that sin and bad habits and wrong thinking can only be addressed by radical action. We live in a generation that's become too comfortable with sin. We live in a generation that bad habits are now considered good and good habits are now considered bad. We live in a generation that wrong thinking is mainstream thinking. And right thinking, right thinking is criticized at every corner. Everything that used to be up is now down. Everything that used to be in is now out. Everything that was out is now in. Everything that used to be good is now bad. And we need to make our minds up that we're not of this world. We may be in this world, but we're not of this world. Our hope is not in this world but our hope is in a world to come. Our hope is in eternity with Jesus Christ. Clap your hands and say amen. I reread the Aaron Ralston story several times this week. He's the guy who in 2003 survived a mountain climbing accident by cutting off his own arm. During a solo descent of Blue John Canyon in southeastern Utah, he dislodged a boulder that came down in a crevice where he was climbing. And as a result of that boulder falling in the crevice he was in, the boulder got stuck with his arm between the boulder and the V of that crevice. And he hung there for five days. One of the problems is nobody knew where he was. One of the problems is he had no communication device with him. He hadn't told anybody where he would be climbing that day. And there was no hope of anybody finding where he was. He was there five days with little food and water. He was there waiting on somebody to maybe happen by, but it didn't happen. Finally, after five days, he realized, if I'm going to get out of this, it's going to require drastic action on my part. The story says this, that Ralston broke his radius and ulma bones in his arm by literally using the rock and twisting his own arm until the, bro the bones were broken. 
and all he had in his pocket was a little Swiss Army knife with a two-inch dull blade. And he took that knife out of his pocket and with that two-inch dull blade and with the pliers that were in that knife, he literally cut off his own arm to allow himself to be freed from that situation. You might ask what caused him to make the radical decision to cut off his own arm. He was asked that by reporters after he was found. He told reporters, and I quote, he said, I wanted to live. He said, I'm newly married. I have a new wife, and I want to spend my life with her. He said, we have a baby on the way, and I didn't want that baby to grow up without a father. He said, I've got a loving mother and loving family that would be crushed if I hung there and died. He said, I have a promising career that I really need to see where that will take me. And he said these words, I still have a full life ahead of me. In his own words, he said, and I quote, I knew that if I didn't do something drastic, I would not make it out alive. And so I made the decision that this would be my rebirth. This would be my opportunity to get my life back. Now all of us understand that if we know something is going on in our health, that is going to take our life, we take the radical steps necessary to preserve our life. If the doctor says you've got a cancerous tumor here, it needs to come out, we say, Doc, do what you got to do. Cut it out. I want to live. If they tell us our lungs are bad, and nothing but a lung transplant. If our hearts are bad, and nothing but a heart transplant. If our kidneys are bad, and nothing but a kidney transplant will save our life, we say, Doc, do what you got to do. Cut the old one out. Put a new one in there. I want to live. I want to go on with my life. I'm one of those that met with a doctor and he said, that right knee's not going to get better. And he said, you're going to have that pain the rest of your life unless I put in a full knee replacement. And I said, cut it out. Cut that old knee out and put me a new knee in there. I'm glad I did it today. I'm very glad that I did it. It's made a lot of difference in my life. Was it painful? Yes. Was it a hard decision? Yes. Everything I've mentioned to you so far, those are all drastic solutions to a, to a final problem if we don't do the solution. Likewise, if we know that something in our life is going to cause us to be lost. Shouldn't we be just as ready and just as willing to do whatever we must to be saved? Hello? Some need a spiritual heart transplant. Some need a spiritual brain, tr brain transplant. Hello? Some need an eye transplant. Some need an emotional transplant. And it takes the will to allow drastic action for you to heal from these things. You see, Ralston wanted to see his wife. He wanted to be a father. He wanted to enjoy his family. He wanted to live. And he realized that none of these things are going to happen unless I'm willing to cut myself loose. Is something 
or some person or some circumstance holding you back, has you bound, tempting you to the point that you have no victory, hindering your walk with God, and causes you to think that if God came today, I might not be saved. Think about it if you will. Has wrong thinking or wrong motives derailed your relationship with God? If that's a yes, it's time to cut them loose. Is your past haunting you and stealing your victory? If the answer is yes, it's time to cut loose all of that self-criticism and judging yourself harshly. Who's speaking into your life today? Words and advice that negatively impact your commitment to God. I say cut them loose. Are your friends a bad influence on you? If the answer is yes, cut them loose. Whose words and opinions, whose concepts and theories are causing you to sway, causing you to compromise your relationship with God? Time to cut them loose. What habits and lifestyle are you allowing to steal your calling? And all of us are called. I said all of us are called. I'm going to say it again. All of us are called. Say, oh preacher, if I could just give up this, I could do that for God. If I could just stop this, if I could quit running with them, if I could quit thinking like that, oh, it's unbelievable what I could probably accomplish for God. Can I tell you, it don't matter who it is, it don't matter what it is, it don't matter where it comes from, if it's stopping you from being what God designed you to be, it's time to cut them loose. You don't need to carry into 2023 the the things that have held you back in 2022. They need to stop being a part of your life today on day one of this new year. You need to say when you walk through that communion line, I'm rededicating my life to you, God. You're going to be the central focus of my life. I'm cutting away everything that's held me back. I'm cutting away every body that's hindering me. I'm cutting away every thought and every intent that is destroying my heart. If you can determine, if you can identify what's killing your hope, if you can identify what is destroying your faith, what is sabotaging your peace, What is stealing your joy? What is cutting off the blessings of God in your life? What's keeping you out of church? So thankful for this great attendance today. The building's nearly full, and I thank God for that. But it needs to look like this every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, all 52 Sundays of the year. Can you identify what's keeping you out of church? Can you identify what hinders you from worshiping when you get here? Can you identify what is crushing your love for God, for your family, and for your church? And my answer is that every one of them you identify, that's something that's got to be cut off. It's got to be cut off don't let it be a part of your 2023 can I get an amen Amen. like Aaron Ralston if you want to be saved bad enough you'll cut yourself loose if you want to save your family bad enough you'll cut yourself loose if you want to save your marriage bad enough You'll cut yourself loose. If you want to have a ministry 
bad enough, you'll cut yourself loose. I wish I could cut you loose. I'd go get me a spiritual machete right now and go to cutting. I'd quit preaching and start walking the aisles. But the bottom line is I can't make the decision to cut you loose. Let me go a step further. Your spouse can't make the decision to cut you loose. I'll go a step further. Your mom and dad can't make the decision to cut yourself loose. You've got to decide for you. You say, well, my husband don't feel the way I do. My wife don't feel the way I do. My children or my parents don't feel the way I do. It don't matter how they feel. It's you that's hanging there stuck. And you're going to die there without realizing your goals if you can't get up the courage to cut yourself loose. There's nothing the devil wants more than for you to drag. For you to drag all of your 2022 trash with you into 2023. The devil don't want to have to invent new challenges for you. He wants the old ones to keep working like they've been working for a long time. But I'm telling you, it's time to cut the cord. It's time to leave that bag of trash behind you and say, I'm walking into 2023 cut loose from all of that. I've got a reason to live. I've got a future in Jesus Christ. I've got a ministry. I want to be happy in my relationship with God and my family. That's only going to happen if and when you take the drastic action of cutting yourself loose. Let me talk to you one moment about compromise. Compromise is a miserable, ineffective substitute for cutting yourself loose. Hello? I don't want to lose my family, so I've decided to compromise with them. I've been friends with him since high school. I don't want to, I don't want to lose that friendship, so I'll compromise with him. I'll sit there and listen to his dirty stories. I'll sit there and listen to his filthy talk. I'll sit there and let him breathe his smoke and his alcohol into my face. I'll sit there and hear him talking about running around and being unfaithful to his wife. Let me tell you what's happening when you make that kind of a compromise. There are spiritual things that are happening inside you at that moment you're probably not even aware of. The spirit that has a hold of that person will reach out and grab a hold of you in that setting and it's going to try to get a foothold in your life. Preacher, I've never been unfaithful to my wife. No, but how often do you think about it because of the people you run with? Preacher, I've never killed anybody in my life. No, but how often do you think about it because of the people, the hateful people you run with? Preacher, I've never given up on God in my life. No, but how often do you think about it because somebody's caused you to compromise oh the only reason I compromise preachers because I want to be happy I got news for you friend when old Ralston was hanging there between that boulder and that crevice for five days there was no real compromise he could tell himself and he did for five days I'm going to get out of this somebody's going to come somebody's going to look for me somebody's going to find me a helicopter's going to fly over I promise you every scenario possible every compromise possible went through his head but it eventually come down to where the rubber meets the road if I'm going to live if I'm going to get back to my new wife if I'm going to be a father to our new baby if I'm going to have a happy life I'm going to have to do something drastic I'm going to have to cut myself loose If anything or anybody or any circumstance is causing you to lose the blessings and favor of God. I don't want no head bobbing. I don't want any amens. I don't want any hand raising. Nobody standing up for the next 30 or 40 seconds. But I think it would blow your mind how many people around us today think that somewhere, somehow, they lost the blessings of God. 
if anything or anybody or any circumstance is causing you to lose the blessings of the Lord, causing you to lose God's favor, causing you to lose the anointing, causing you to lose your calling, causing you to lose your ministry. I've come to tell you on this first Sunday of 2023, cut yourself loose. Allow the blessings of God again in your life. Allow the favor of God again in your life. Get back to doing the ministry God called you to do. Get back to serving Him like your heart wants to serve Him. But it's going to take drastic action. Preacher, I'm in the mess I'm in because somebody hurt me. I'm in the mess I'm in because somebody did me wrong. I'm in the mess I'm in because somebody betrayed me. Can I tell you that person and their betrayal is not worth you losing out with God over. One of the reasons that God tells us to forgive is because He wants us to be free. It's not in my notes, and so I'll just skim over it and try not to take too long. But you forgiving somebody does not free them. You forgiving somebody frees you. Hello? When you forgive somebody, you're not telling them you are no longer accountable for what you're done. You're saying to them, I'm no longer going to live under the clouds you put over me. Because hatred and the love of God cannot live in the same vessel. The Bible said sweet and bitter water cannot come out of the same fountain. It's impossible. It says that a fig tree can't bear olives. It's impossible. Whatever you are inside, whatever you've allowed inside of you. But oh preacher, you don't know what they've done. I don't know what they've done. But is it worse than cutting out your cutting off your hand, cutting off your foot, or plucking out your eye? You don't want to cut off your hand, foot, or pluck out your eye. You may want to smack them. But when it's all said and done, you're only feeding that anger, feeding the hatred which is stopping you from being all God wants you to be. He was taken in the middle of the night. They come after him with soldiers and swords like he was a common criminal. They literally led him away with hands tied. They took him to a place where they buffeted him, where they whipped him. 39 times with a cat of nine tails that left his back looking like hamburger. They spit in his face. They mocked him. They scoffed him. They cursed him. They threatened him. They rejoiced in his pain and suffering. They made him carry his own cross. When he got to the top of Golgotha's hill... They didn't tie him to the cross like they did those on either side of him. They laid him down on a cross and nailed his hands and his feet to the cross. And they lifted that cross and dropped it into a hole. And when it did, the flesh of his hands and feet tore. And they come by to see he was dead and they saw a movement in his chest that maybe he's still breathing. An old mean soldier took a spear and thrust it in his side. And the last words that he uttered on this earth, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That's the example he set for us. That no matter what people do to you, you got a mission to accomplish. you got a job to do. He was going to walk into hell and lead Cab Cap. Cap 
captivity captive. He was going to take the keys to death, hell, and the grave. He was going to rise again in three days. And his death, burial, and resurrection would be a type of our repentance, baptism, and Holy Ghost. He had a mission to accomplish, and he knew it cannot be accomplished if I take my last breath with hatred in my heart and anger in my spirit. i got to get rid of it. So, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I'm telling you that whatever it is that's keeping you from having a happy home, whatever it is that's keeping you from, from being a good friend, whatever it is that's keeping you angry all the time, whatever it is that makes you come to church and pretend you're a wooden Indian, whatever it is that, that, that's causing you to not be what God called you to be, whatever it is that's stopping you from ministering, stopping you from worshiping, stopping you from being faithful on this Sunday morning, January 1, 2023, I'm telling you, cut yourself loose. I'm telling you, cut yourself loose. Don't carry that. Don't go on with that. Don't keep going down that road. Make your mind up. This is going to be a year of supernatural blessing, supernatural miracles, supernatural favor, and I'm not going to miss what God is doing. Do whatever must be done to cut yourself loose. Cutting loose destructive people in your life. Friendships, associations. It isn't easy. But sometimes it has to be done. Abraham, the Bible said, loved his nephew Lot. But there's a point where he had to cut him loose. You go toward the well-watered plains of Sodom and Gomorrah. And I'm going to go to the Rocky Mountain side where it's harder. But i got to cut you loose. Joshua loved Israel, but he had to cut them loose. And he announced, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Y'all do what you want to do. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Paul wrote to the church at Corinth, Purge the evil person from among you. Cut him loose. Proverbs 3 and 5 said, the, said to fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Cut it loose. Proverbs 14 and 7 said, Go from the presence of of a foolish man. Psalm 1 and 1 said, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor seats in the, sits in the seat of the scoffers. Cut them loose. Romans 16 and 3 said, Watch out for those who cause divisions and create obstacles. The verse ends by saying, Avoid them cut them loose only a fool or a novice would stand here and tell you that cutting yourself loose is easy the fact is that cutting yourself loose is going to be one of the most difficult things that you ever do but in order to be what God designed you to be to accomplish what God designed you to accomplish. To walk in the path that God has specifically created for you to walk in. For those things to happen, you've got to take the drastic action of cutting loose everything from yesterday that's going to stop you from being what you ought to be today and tomorrow. Not everyone's going to understand your decision to cut loose things. There's people that's been participating in things with you that you don't, that you know in your heart you shouldn't participate in. They're not going to understand when you tell them I ain't doing that no more. There's people that aren't, aren't going to understand when you say I'm not going there anymore. There's people that aren't going to understand when you say I don't like that. I know I've been acting like I like it but I don't like it because it's destroying everything that's precious 
in my life. And if I don't cut it loose, it will eventually destroy me. Not everyone's going to support your decision to cut things loose. Some's going to fight you. Some people's going to get in your face. Some people's going to go toe-to-toe with you. You don't need to do that. That's foolishness. Most of them will want to blame me. Let them do it. I don't care. That preacher, that church you go to. Isn't it amazing? They never say that Bible you read. Hello? Not everybody's going to support you. And if you decide today to cut yourself loose, it's going to require determination. I promise you, Mr. Ralston thought about it a day or two or three. I promise you more than one time he got that knife out of his pocket with his good hand and he looked at it and thought, oh my God, it's so dull. This is going to hurt. This is drastic. Oh, how am I going to do it? That dull knife ain't going to cut through the bone. And then the thought came to him, you're going to have to twist your arm and break your own arm, break the bone, because the knife won't cut through it. I promise you it required determination. I promise you he thought about it for a while. I promise you he tried to talk himself out of it. I promise you he tried to tell himself there's got to be another way. But eventually he come to the conclusion, if I want to see my wife, if I want to be a father to my baby, if I want my mama to quit worrying, I'm going to have to take drastic action now. And I'm talking to some folks today. That as we prepare to take communion, and I've already told you everybody needs to take it, but I'm going to tell you this. When we walk around this table and we say, God, I'm remembering your death. I'm remembering your body that was broken. I'm remembering your blood that was shed. Jesus said when he gave the first communion, this do in remembrance of me. So we're going to remember. But there's more to it than it just being a remembrance service. It's good that we remember. It's good that we recognize the price that was paid. But there's got to be more to it than that. When you pass this table and somebody puts that unleavened bread in your hand and says, take this. This is his body that was broken for you. And they put that little cup of the fruit of the vine in your hand and they say, take this. This signifies his blood that was shed for you. I don't want you to stand there and gulp it down and eat the wafer and then just walk back to your seat nonchalant. I want you to stand there when you take it and I want you to say in your heart, God, today I'm rededicating my life to you. God, in this first service of the new year, on the first day of the new year, I want everybody to know that I'm recommitting. I want everybody to know I'm rededicating. I want everybody to know that old things are passed away and behold, all things become new today. Today, Let's stand together, could we? Our ministers are preparing to serve us communion. Listen carefully to me. Communion is a time for renewed commitment beyond simply remembering. Communion is a time for renewed commitment Communion is a time for giving ourselves to God anew. Communion is a statement of our faith and trust in all that Christ's body and blood paid for, for us. He that knew no sin became sin so that you and I would be free from sin. Can somebody say thank you, Jesus? It is a statement of our dedication. It is saying again, this is your chance when you walk through. It is saying all over again, 
I want to leave those things which are behind, behind. God, on this first day of this new year, in our very first service, I want old thinking to be left behind. I want old worldly philosophies to be left behind. I want worldly entanglements to be left behind. I want worldly pleasures to be left behind. I want worldly people that are wrongly influencing my life, I want them left behind behind. I want anything that comes between me and you, God, to be left behind. Because, God, in this new year that is full of promises of the supernatural, I want to walk into this new year as a brand new creature in Christ Jesus. How many of you want that? Would you raise both your hands to heaven? And I want you to start out by repenting. We will eventually worship. But the first thing is, with your hands raised in submission to Him. That's why we raise our hands. We are submitting. We're giving up. We are surrendering to Him. Put your hands in the air. And I want you in your own words, your own way, for your own reason. I want you to start telling God that you're sorry for every wrong, every wrong thought, every wrong action, every wrong idea, every wrong association, every wrong step, everything I've done displeasing to you, God. Forgive me today. Forgive me, O oh God, for everything that's in my past. Forgive me, O oh God, for everything that was in 2022 and before. Forgive me, O oh God, for anything I've done that displeases you. Forgive me, O oh God, for anything I've done that brought separation between me and you. Forgive me, O oh God. Forgive me, I pray. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm seeking your forgiveness this morning, Lord. I've got to repent. I've got to get forgiveness before I go on and cut myself loose. Forgive us today, O oh God. Forgive us today, Lord. The Bible said if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I want everybody that will to clap your hands to Him for the promise in that verse, for the promise of that powerful verse. He said, if you'll repent, if you'll confess your sins, He said, I'll be faithful and just to forgive your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Jesus, oh, I feel Him in this house. Anybody want to worship Him a moment before we go on? Anybody want to tell Him, try to tell Him how much you love Him? Anybody want to try and tell him how thankful you are to him? Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Lift your hands again and love him. Take advantage of this time, this opportunity to just bask in His presence. Love Him with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength. Praise God. We have good ushers here ready to give you directions. They'll be giving you directions in four different areas. We have four tables. Is that right, Brother Thorpe? There's four of these set up, two up front, two in the middle aisles that we've created. For those that are in the side aisles, again, follow the directions of the ushers, and they will march you out where you can come by the table and go right back into your seat until the ushers call on you. Until the ushers call on you. If you would, please stay where you are. There's so many of us in here that if people starts moving around the aisles, we will not be able to move the people. So please, if you will, wait till an usher comes to your row and tells you to go left or right and you follow his directions, if you would, please. I'm asking everybody, you be in prayer, prayerful, prayerful, prayerful contemplation. 
until it's your turn to take communion. After communion, return to your seat and be thankful. Be audibly thankful for what God has done in your life and is doing and will do in your life. Let's follow the direction of the ushers, if you would, please. Ushers. Brother Jordan and Brother Eddie, if you'd come to the front of the line and then go to the keyboards. God, we love you. We love you and worship you today, Lord Jesus. We love you and we worship you today, Lord Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. We love you and worship you today, Lord Jesus. If you young fellows want to take communion, you can. It's up to you. Ushers, make sure everybody knows they can take communion. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, we love you. God, we love you. Jesus. Jesus, thank you, Lord. There's such a beautiful presence. There is such a beautiful presence of God in this house. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God.
white if you would lead the way and come through this section right here. Come right down this way. Lead the way. Go around this table and back to your rows if you would, please. Thank you, Lord Jesus. in this section over here that has not received communion yet this table right here is available if there's anybody in the center or the side this is available over here you're welcome sound people you're welcome come get communion if you will everything will be fine cameras sound projection everything's fine you can leave it come get communion thank you Lord ushers if you haven't gone through please do Thank you, Jesus. Whenever we're sure that everyone is going through that wants to go through, ministers, if you'll join me in front, I'm talking about the ministers that are serving communion. All of us that have been serving, we will receive communion together up here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Everybody serving that has not yet taken communion, would you line up behind Brother Rivera here? He's going to start the line for our ministry and leaders. Thank you, Lord. Everybody serving. Here's what I want to ask all of you to do while they're finishing. If you are of a mind to tell the Lord that you love him, if you're of a mind to tell him thank you for what you did for me, if you understand that when you took that bread and you took that blood, that represents a new opportunity for you to get closer to him, that the old would pass away and that all things would become new, 
if you're ready to tell God, I really want things to be right between me and you, would you stand and put both your hands in the air and to the very best of your ability, tell him that. I really want, I may or may not make it throughout the day and have to start over again tomorrow, but God, I really want, I really want everything to be good between me and you. I want to be what you want me to be. I want to live like you want me to live. I want to do what you want me to do. I want to love, oh God, like you love. Help me today, God, in this rededication time. First service, first day of a brand new year. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Anybody in here want to say the words because you mean it? Lord, I love you more than anything in this whole wide world. Can you say that to him? Are you able to? God, I love you more than anything. I love you more than anything in this whole wide world. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, how I love you. How I prove you o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. Jesus, I love you. Let me deal with one more thing the Holy Ghost put in my spirit today. The hardest two scriptures in your Bible to live. Not Malachi, bring all the tithe into the storehouse. It's not Deuteronomy, dealing with what we wear. It's not, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together. It's not holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. The hardest two verses in your Bible to obey, to believe, to embrace. Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him. There are some people, the thing you've got to cut loose today is the thinking that you're in control of your life. That your life is good or bad because of you. That you're successful or a failure because of you. That you are whatever because of you. Because as long as we think we're directing our lives, ultimately, it means we don't trust God like we should. That phrase, in all thy ways acknowledge him. Lean not to thine own understanding. Some versions of the Bible says, forget what you think you know. Hello? I wonder if we could raise our hands one more time and in this atmosphere it's going to be easier than at another time. Would you raise both your hands to heaven and say, Lord, I trust you. I trust you not to make a mistake with my life. When I got the word last night about the Grossel family, God be my judge, I walked through the house and I said, God, you never make a mistake. God, you never make a mistake. I don't know why, I don't know why, but God, you never make a mistake. 
Would you lift your hands and say, God, I trust you. I'm going to walk through the open doors. I'm going to stop when a door's closed. I'm not going to charge you foolishly when I don't understand what's going on in my life. I'm not going to allow a spirit of fear to prevail in my thinking, in my spirit. But God, I'm going to put everything on the altar and I'm going to trust you. In this service today, I'm declaring that I'm going to trust you. of God is filling this house today. If this is indicative of what God's going to do in 2023, then I'm ready to go. I'm ready to make the journey. What a visitation of the Holy Ghost in this house today. 